Skibbity bop and da <laughs> Welcome to Voicey here. This is your host, Captain Zack, and today's subreddit is r slash choosing beggars. Also, shout out if you know what that intro was. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright guys, this story is called, Highly Respected Professional Expected Me to Do Extra Work for Zero Compensation. This has, fortunately, been the only choosy beggar I have ever had to deal with in my six plus years of being a fine artist. About three years ago, I was contacted to illustrate a children's book. The author is a well-known, well-respected professional and politician in my state, and the pay was $1,200 for about 20 pages of professional illustrations. This was my first children's book illustration gig, so I was stoked and was afraid to ask for half up front as I was a bit naive and intimidated. I completed all the illustrations, met with the author, and she went wild over it. She said she would be in touch about payment and when the book will be published. Fast forward about five months, she finally reaches out to say that the book wasn't able to get published and that she is upset as she was looking forward to it. So I'm like, oh, that sucks, but I'm still gonna be paid, right? Nope, she wasn't going to pay me. I should have stood my ground and been adamant about getting paid, but I was a young artist and didn't want to burn a bridge with an accomplished author and professional, so I remained civilized and chalked it up as a learning experience. I really should have cut my ties with this woman right then and there. Well, back in January, I was contacted to illustrate a political children's book for her. It really wasn't my kind of thing, but I agreed because I am now more experienced and not afraid to stand my ground and demand I get paid. The gig was $1,000 for 20 pages of artwork. Cool, but this time, I demanded half up front and the other half when I complete the drawings. She agrees and I get paid 500 cold hard buckaroonies. Awesome, this is going great so far! Or so I thought. I completed the 20 drawings, met up with her and the co-author. They went nuts over them. They said they're perfect, blah, 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 blah. I asked if anything needed to be changed, and they said no. Cool. I was paid the rest of the $500. I thought this was a job well done and was glad I decided to give her another chance. Maybe the last book was just a fluke and she is actually good for her word. Nope. Fast forward to April, they need four additional pages done for the book. I said, cool, that will be an additional $200. She was flabbergasted. Excuse me, we already paid you $1,000 and you agreed to do the artwork for this book. You cannot ask for more money. She paid me to do 20 pages for $1,000. That is $50 a page, which is a hell of a lot cheaper than almost every other children's book illustrator I know. So I explained that I needed to be compensated for these extra four pages. She said she has no more money to give, which is BS because I know she is loaded, and that without these four drawings, we will not be able to complete the book. Again, stupid me. Not wanting to burn a bridge with this well-known woman, obliged and decided to create the extra four pages. She was happy, cool, whatever. I still got $1,000 and another publication under my belt. This, however, was not the end. In August, she asked me to change two of the drawings I had already done. Now, remember, I asked her back in January if anything needed to be changed, and she said, no, they're perfect. I was traveling during this time and wouldn't be able to complete them until October, and that I would only do them for $100. She surprisingly agreed to these stipulations. I come home, I get the artwork finished, and let her know it's done and tell her to please send over $50 before I email the artwork to her as I had a feeling she wasn't going to pay me. I wait, and wait, and wait, and wait. No response. Until this evening. I got a text from her stating that she has not received my artwork and wondered where it was. I tell her I had completed it and was waiting on half up front before I sent it over to her. She freaked out on me and claimed that she was maybe going to pay me for the extra work, but it wasn't a definite. Maybe. She was maybe going to pay me for my work, I about lost my crap. She claimed I am unprofessional, is disappointed in me, and that she thought she was doing a young artist a favor. I replied, I don't do artwork with the promise of maybe getting paid. I then told her about all the previous times I was disrespected by her and felt as though I have been taken advantage of as a young artist. I told her I will no longer send over the artwork and for her to not worry about payment. 
and that our professional relationship ends here. I'm still shaking from anger and fear, as I'm afraid she can ruin my reputation among other authors and artists. But overall, I'm glad I finally stood up for myself, even though it took about three years. Oh yeah, 100% you were used. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, um, that's not very nice of the politician to do. Obviously, that goes without saying, but I, honestly, that's the only thing going through my mind. You know what she should do? She should whistle blow on this politician's booty, expose her, and get her cancelled because that's what we do now, right? Alright, I'm kidding about that last bit, but yeah, expose her. She needs to be, like, held accountable because that's... It's uh, messed up. That's stealing your time right there. And artwork, too. Like, right? I don't know. This story is called Expired Coupon Plus Wrong Product Equals Choosing Beggar Needs These Chips for Her Children. I'm pretty positive this is a Choosing Beggar story, but please tell me if I'm wrong. I am very new to Reddit. <laughs> I work in a gas station and I have seen some freaking Richard ass people while working there. But this lady angered me so much. I just had to share. To start, we don't order everything for our store. Certain things require certain vendors to come by and order and stock for us. One of these vendors does a majority of our chips along with their own personal coupons. Now, we have this chip rack that is a bit out of the way, so the vendor tends to forget about it since it never even needs to be stocked because the customers also don't see it. This is where the expired coupon comes in. The vendor forgot a large stack of them for months near this chip rack. We could have checked, too. I am at the register, and Choosing Beggar comes up with her, uh, children, grown-ass adults, and hands me the stack of expired coupons along with the product she wished to purchase. Anything else I can get for you today? Yes, I found these expired coupons that have been expired for over a month. I am tired of seeing them there, so you're gonna have to accept them since you guys are too lazy to do your job right. A little rude, but she wasn't completely wrong. I am so sorry about that. Did you happen to get them at the chip rack in the corner? Yes. That makes sense. The vendor must have forgotten them. I'll just... No, it is your job. It's your fault. I found them for you and you need to make this right. Of course. I can absolutely honor this coupon. Thank you for getting them off the shelf. You'll just need to get the chips on the coupon and I'll adjust the price accordingly. You're going to use them on these chips. The coupon was for three small bags of chips for like four dollars? She had brought up the largest size we have as well as the wrong brand. I'm sorry, but the coupon is for those chips over there. Since I was so inconvenienced, I think you owe me a better deal. Again, I'm sorry about that and I am willing to honor an expired coupon for your inconvenience. But I can't just give you what you want for the price that you want. It's against policy, but you can always talk to the manager in the morning. Are you saying my children don't deserve these chips because you can't do your job properly? Uh, I'm sorry? I, I don't understand? My children want these chips! Now we come here a lot. Never seen her before. <laughs> and I don't think you want to lose me or my children as customers, so just take the coupon. I am willing to take the coupon, but for the right product. This is getting ridiculous. You won't honor my coupon. You won't accept blame. And you don't care about my children. I don't want them anymore. You can keep your coupon. I'll just buy the rest of my things then. She proceeds to buy all this candy and cookies with an EBT card. Complained about how rude I was. I dropped the whole customer service and just freaking went through the motion. And then asked her children what cigarettes they wanted. Pulls out a massive amount of 20s, she clearly didn't need the EBT card, which just pissed me off even more, and she gives me her cigarette order. Of course, I needed an ID from all of them, and that's basically when she lost it. They're not even smoking them, they're my kids, I'm the one buying, you don't need all IDs, you're just mad because I caught you being bad at your job, blah 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 blah. Mm, yeah, that's the gas station life for you. <laughs> I'm kidding, I only ever had cool customers because uh, we were in a really small town and all we had really were regulars or people just trying to get the hell out of there because <laughs> our town was kind of really small. But yeah, if you want your kids to have a cool life, just buy a gas station in a pretty small but nice town and everyone will think your kid's cool because like, I remember when I was a kid, my dad owned the gas station. This is very unrelated to the story and I'm sorry, but um, <laughs> my dad owned the gas station and uh, we had amazing pizza, honestly the best pizza I've ever had. And everyone thought it was cool because they were like, oh, you can get free pizza whenever you want. I was like, yeah, I can. But my dad wasn't that irresponsible. But yeah, gas station's cool as a kid. <laughs> Gets you a lot of clout. 
This story is called My Cousin First Choosing Beggar Experience. A bit of backstory. Last month, my cousin won an iPad from a lucky draw at her company annual dinner. Not being an Apple user herself, she told me to put it on Muda.my, Malaysia version of Craigslist. The listing price was around $800. I think it's around $200 cheaper than Apple's website. Fast forward to last Monday. Choosing Beggar contacted me asking for a discount. I told her that it is already below market value. She still insisted about a discount, saying that it's her son's birthday and all the other usual choosy beggar BS. I told her to discuss it with my cousin since she is the owner, so I gave her my cousin's number. After around 40 minutes, my cousin calls me saying that she agreed to sell it to Choosy Beggar for $600. I told her that it's too cheap, especially for a sealed box iPad. Maybe we should wait for other potential buyers. She said that she felt sorry for Choosing Beggar, and she doesn't really care about the price, and she also agreed to send it to Choosing Beggar, who lived 150 kilometers away from our town. She asked me if I can drive her there because she was really scared to go alone. Luckily, the town that Choosing Beggar lives in is near my parents' house. Yesterday, we arrive at said town. My cousin calls Choosing Beggar and asks her to meet us at a restaurant. Then, Choosing Beggar arrived. She was this generic Malaysian version of a Karen. Scarves that doesn't cover her hair, big gold necklace, fake Gucci sunglasses, and with her is her son, nice kid, around 15, I think. After a few minutes of talking, my cousin hands the iPad to nice kid. Nice Kid opens the box and he looks really happy about it. Here is some conversation that I remember. Why would you sell this for that price? I want it from a lucky draw and I hear that your birthday is next week so I want to help your mother. Ah, oh, thanks. Mom, I really like it. Looking at Choosing Beggar, Choosing Beggar looks at us with some rage and with a high-pitched tone says, So you got this for free? Why didn't you sell it to me at a high price? Are you trying to scam me? Uh, it's not a scam, ma'am. Plus, it's already $400 cheaper than Apple Store. But she got it for free, so she should just give this to Nice Kid. No, my cousin won this. Not Nice Kid, not me, and certainly not you. If you want it, then you have to pay for it. If not, we will leave. At this point, my cousin is shocked with what happened, and I can see Nice Kid starting to lower his head. But ma'am, we already agreed with the price. I even came all this way to hand it over to you personally. Choosing beggar while standing up. You got this for free. You tried to sell me something you got for free. You are scamming me and my son. I will tell him and have this iPad confiscated. People start looking at us. The restaurant worker came and asked what was happening. I told him it was just some business deal that was going south. And then Choosing Beggar shouts, You tried to scam me! Is this how your parents raised you? You should go before I call my husband and arrest both of you! For the record, my cousin is an orphan. She's been living with my parents since her parents passed away. And every time someone mentions her parents, she will cry. A lot. Suddenly, the restaurant manager came and asked us all to leave before he called the police on us for disturbing his business. Choosy Beggar tries to leave with the iPad in her hand. I pulled the iPad and she screamed like a five-year-old, like I broke her arm. I pulled my cousin, who is bawling, to my car and we don't look back. She's still screaming. I drove to my mother's house and tell her what happened. My cousin gave the iPad to my mom. She doesn't want to have anything to do with it anymore. Last night, Choosing Beggar had the gut to call my cousin and said that she agreed with the price if we deliver it to her again. My cousin said that she already sold the iPad and hung up before Choosing Beggar started to scream again. Well, that's not very nice. It that makes me so sad because my cousin seems like a really sweet person and she got taken advantage of. That's mean. This story's called, Friend wants me to watch her cats with little to no pay and expects me to miss Christmas and New Year's to do so. So I have a friend who asked me if I can watch her cats for her. She has two and was leaving out of town for Christmas. She asked if I could watch her cats from December 17th up until the 27th and 28th. She couldn't offer me a lot and said she would pay me $50 to watch them, but also offer the food and the food in her fridge and for me to be able to stay at her house while I watch them. Now, at the beginning, I thought the offer was fair until I learned a bit more. Apparently, she feeds her cats twice a day and feeds them both dry and wet food. And apparently one hogs the food while the other has a sensitive stomach. The way she was explaining this made me realize how complicated her cats were and how much of a chore this would actually be. 
I thought her cats were just simple. Fill the bowl and that's that. I was wrong. And now where the issue comes in is, I don't have a car and I live in a big city. And for me to go back and forth to her place to feed cats would be a lot of money to take the bus and a lot of time. Almost four hours of back and forth each time and eight dollars in bus fare a day. Now, here is the issue. Originally, I wasn't going back home for Christmas, but on Christmas, I'd still like to see my mom and leaving her house in the morning to take the bus to her place to feed the cats, then go back home, then go back again to feed the cats at night would be a pain. But I would have still done it if that's the only time I had to do that. Now, here's where I'm angry. Last night, said friend messages me and asks me if I'm okay with her now extending her vacation until the 2nd of January, after New Year's. And I stated it shouldn't be much of a problem, but I asked if there's a way I can feed her cats once a day instead of two. In my head, just leave the food out. But she explained that her cats have sensitive stomachs and food can't be left out, etc. At this point, I try to explain that this doesn't seem like an easy job at all on my part, and it's gonna cost me almost $8 in bus fare a day to feed her cats, and I'd like to spend Christmas with my mom and New Year's with my boyfriend. She gets all snappy with me and exclaims how I'm being flaky and how I knew this before accepting the offer to look after them when she never explained how her cat's schedule is pretty complicated for someone who has no transportation. And then tells me how she knows she can't offer a lot of money, but expected out of the kindness of her own heart since she offered her keys and place to me that I wouldn't have a problem. I tried to resonate with her that it's not anything like that, but I don't want to give up my holidays for something like this and how I deserve time with my family too. And she just said, yeah, screw this, I'll just take them with me, and then ghosted me. Am I in the wrong? I feel bad because I wanted to help her, but I didn't realize her cats needed so much care. <laughs> All right, let me throw in my two pennies right here. Okay, so I was gonna say you should still watch the cats no matter what because you agreed to that. And if your friend's not being reasonable, then that's on her. After that, just cut her off because you know what? It while it does, you know, annoy you that you can't spend time with your family and all that stuff for the holidays, you still agree to it. And I feel like if you want to be a good person, you should do that. Although I know it's unfair, but also your friend is a jerk and not a very good friend if she's not being understanding that you really want to spend time with your family and all that crap. So anyways, uh, your friend's a jerk, good riddance, and moving on. <laughs> you didn't do anything wrong. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.